Timos. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Good morning. Gloria, Raj, Judy, Teresa, Edison, Tito, Rubén, Rochi, Roxana, Ana Islandia, Beatriz, Exxon, Milva, uh, Moises, Veronica, Karen, Susi, and Amado, David, and everyone in Facebook because we are trans broadcasting from in Facebook now. Today is the 19th of July, and today we have a very special guest speaker. Her name is Elizabeth Ortiz, and she is from Ecuador. Let me read you uh, her bio data. Elizabeth Ortiz is a freelance TIFOL consultant trainer and certified facilitator. She has presented workshops in Latin America and all over Ecuador. For the last 20 years, she has focused her professional attention to develop and implement training and professional development programs. The design of social interest projects with national and international nonprofit organizations and a content reviewer of EFL courses for international publishing companies. During her professional life, Elizabeth has represented Ecuador in ELT forums as an active member of the ELT and TESOL international community. She holds a matesol, matesol, matisol. Matesol. Matesol, and an OTA certificate on ELT management. Elizabeth teaches EFL at Universidad Técnica Estatal de Quevedo. She's also the general director of World English Institute in Quevedo, Puerto Viejo, and Guayaquil. Elizabeth is a doctoral student at Universidad Cesar Vallejo in Peru. So Elizabeth is 50% Ecuadorian and 50% Peruvian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let, let's give Elizabeth a warm round of uh, virtual applause. Okay, thank you very much, dear colleagues. Thank you, Jaime, for the invitation and thank you, Universidad de Piura, for uh, making it possible and work. So I'm so excited to have this um, uh, time to share with all of you guys. It's Sunday morning and hopefully we have a good, a good time together. So um, my first question for you before I start sharing, it's how do you feel this morning? How do you feel this morning? To answer this question, the only thing I need you to do, so as a basic, back to basics, a piece of paper and a marker. And I want you to tell me in one word, in one word, how do you feel today? Okay, Gloria, you're showing something nice over there. So, okay, how do you feel today in one word? Show that, please, Gloria, again. I didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, Jaime is going to have, um, is going to take a picture for, for posterity. So, okay. One, how do you feel today? One, two, two, and wait, wait, hey, Raj, I love it. Three, photo taken. Thank you very much. So I'm so glad that you all have, and in spite of you have some concerns and some personal worries, you have the opportunity to share with us. As Edison said a few minutes ago on backstage, so just to focus our mind on something different, so which is good. Okay, guys, it is important to us to know how you feel. And as a teacher, it's important to know how do our students feel at the very beginning. It doesn't matter if we are working on remote learning or virtual learning or online learning. So back to basics and a combination of paper and marker just to let them mm, express their thoughts and feelings by that time. So it, it helps us to guide or to direct our our strength and our emotions and the content to, and, and be more empathetic with our students. So uh, every day I start my classes with how do you feel? Tell me how do you feel? Tell me what's going on with you? So that, that is part of the humanistic side of all this. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but 
all of these positive aspects because something happens for a reason. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to start sharing with you. So please, uh, Jaime is going to be my eyes and the screen. So we are going to I have opportunity to ask and answer questions. So please, this is not a monologue. This is not just uh, it's not a lecture. So please be sure that we'll have something interesting to share and uh, we'll do it. OK, let's see. Um, OK, so we are going to share some some information and exchange some um, share some ideas about this topic that is I'm, I'm very excited and passionate about uh, I've been working with uh, teaching for peace or peace uh, education in uh, for around two years and uh, it's a topic that really excites me uh, then we have uh, my uh, first introduction. So hello, I'm Elizabeth and I'm uniquely me. So I believe in God. If I were a color, I would be orange. I'm proud I can do what I love. A word that describes me, kind. My favorite song, what a wonderful word. My favorite quote, I never lose, I either win or learn. So Nelson Mandela is one of my favorite activists. If you want to contact me after the session on, uh, or after this, um, please feel free to do it. So the important thing, as you see, I have an avatar over there and uh, I am including the websites where I take most of the resources or some of the resources I've, I've used in my classroom. And uh, even it's not orange in my avatar, it's purple and pink. And that is because it's my eight years old baby girl uh, favorite colors and I wanted to honor her because she's been very brave in these four months of being inside, at home and uh, being patient and dealing with mom and dad and, uh, and she's been one of my heroes and that's, I wanted to honor her with the colors she loved. Uh, she loved. Um, and then we have another source, the Big Life Journal. It's a highly recommended website. And this uh, I am uniquely me activity. I usually use it with my students uh, to get in to know each other. So, and that is a good icebreaker activity. And the source is Big Life Journal, which is a highly recommended website where I get uh, some of my ideas connected to peace education, so highly recommended. And today I prefer, or I decided for this topic just to uh, let you know my other side, not the professional side, but who Elizabeth is. Okay, so then we have, I am uniquely me, and this is me, this is Elizabeth, that is my avatar, and uh, those is more or less what I like, what I feel, uh, how I feel, and um, my, what do I, what I believe. Okay, let's see. So this briefly, the topics that we are going to uh, talk about this morning. So what is teaching for peace or peace education? We are going to talk a little bit about the 21st century challenges. Uh, the role of these challenges in the school curriculum. So we are also going to talk a little bit about how to manage a student's emotions and also um, we're, uh, talk a little bit about something that uh, uh, we don't usually have the opportunity to talk about which is teachers' well-being. Even I have the closing of question and answers, but remember that you can ask questions along the session. Okay, so then the first we have peace and peace education. So those are two um, terms that we have to have a very clear idea about what they mean and what is the influence of these two uh, powerful words in our classrooms and in our profession. So then we have, uh, when we define it, peace, it comes from the Latin word pax, which is cessation in fighting. And uh, then we have, uh, uh, when we talk about peace, sometimes we refer about what peace is not rather than what it is. 
So we prefer sometimes uh, we prefer to use or we usually use expression that it's injustice. So injustice produces or provokes a war. It doesn't provoke. It doesn't provoke uh, peace. But if we change it to what it is, what peace is, peace is, uh, or it makes you a sense of justice. So the way we transmit the words, the way the way we transmit the message should also change in this process of peace. So Hicks in 1985, he um, introduced the term uh, negative peace. And it says that uh, it's not just the absence of over violence. Uh, uh, it also encompasses the presence of social, economical, and political justice, which is essential to the notion of positive peace. So, and, uh, and let's uh, pay closer attention to this uh, aspect because again, it comes to the words, how do we say, how do we transmit a message? Another important, uh, uh, I would say, definition about peace is that it's a dynamic process. It's not a static or it's not even a passive, uh, passive state because peace is hard to build and easy to destroy. But the most important thing in this process is that we need to build and maintain peace as active agents or, or uh, getting involved actively in this process of peace. So we have a very interesting article from Jody Patra, basically, and uh, she uh, writes about peace education in 21st century um, that I recommend. It's very easy to follow. And then we have, on the other hand, um, I'm, uh, by the way, I'm going to introduce some uh, familiar faces for most of us or for all of us uh, with some uh, interesting quotes. And this is another website I recommend if you want to use uh, in your classroom, it, which is inspiring as lights, uh, as also as a resource for your classrooms. Um, and then we when we talk about peace education, and the first thing that is the process of acquiring values, knowledge, and developing attitudes, skills, behaviors, to live in harmony. So, but what is the clue here? It's not only living in harmony with the rest of the people around us. So it's living in harmony first with ourselves, second with others, and with the natural environment. So it's, uh, when we talk about peace education, it's not the, only the relationship with the students and the outside and their surroundings is the students and their inner community, starting with family, locally, country based, regional, and globally. So it's from the inner side to the outside. And uh, peace education also looks for this transformation of individuals as agents of peace also uh, encourages an awareness of rights and responsibilities as global citizenship, and of course, becoming caring, resilient, empathetic human beings. So then we have that, we understand that peace education is a process, but it's not only the process of acquiring values, but also to promoting knowledge, the skills, these attitudes and these values to bring about behavior changes, in children, youth, and adults to prevent conflict and violence. So we know what we understand that we see violence and discrimination and the different kind of, that that is also an, uh, another kind of violence um, uh, because intolerance behaviors. But what we need here is to teach our students to uh, how to deal with this situation in order to prevent conflict and violence, which is a different way to see. When you have a war, we look for, we look for different ways to solve that conflict. In this case, in peace education, intends to prevent that any conflict or any violent um, action happen and, and have a huge influence in our lives and in our society. Okay, so change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. So uh, we, um, 
do the change that we want to see in our lives. Another uh, quote from Gandhi, in this case, I chose Barack Obama when he defined change. Um, no other person is going to do what we have to do. And, uh, and that, uh, that's why we need to take some actions in terms of uh, including peace education in our curriculum. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the challenges. So the Inter-American Development Bank designed and um, I mean conducted some research about what were the challenges our students were facing in this context of COVID-19. And uh, there was um, uh, around a month ago, I read in an academic magazine, um, a researcher who mentioned that the 21st century started in 2020. And that made me reflect uh, because he said, okay, it's 2020, so 20 years after the 21st century started. But the real impact that we all we had in the, because of the COVID-19, it's a 360 degrees. So we are facing, and our students, of course, are facing challenges and different challenges. And then we have um, some of the challenges that, of course, affect in the curriculum and in the kind of strategies and activities, and of course, in the contents or skills that we need to help our students to develop in the classroom. So then we have um, the challenges, we have overcrowding, absent parents, lack of family support, educational resources, technological infrastructure that we all know and we are suffering, and our students are also suffering, but we are trying to overcome with this isolation, sedentary lifestyle, anxiety, stress, domestic violence, digital literacy, illiteracy, motivation. As you see, all of these are connected with, um, with violence, in fact. And then we have the programs that propose by this, uh, by this research, it's that we should include more behavioral science, digital, art, music, sports, mindfulness, citizenship, entrepreneurship, and what are the skills that our students need to be developed or we need to encourage our students or help our students to develop is the digital self-regulation, perseverance, adaptability, creativity, empathy, compassion, critical thinking, resilience, emotional intelligence and communication. As you see, there is nothing new. So these, all these skills have been, we have been talking about these skills for several years, not only in the 21st century, but in the 20th century. But now, or nowadays, it's like more important than ever to pay attention to these aspects. And of course, it's going to have an effect in how do we implement peace education in, and in our curriculum. And research, uh, considers three aspects that we need to include as a most in our curriculum. So then we have a tolerance, conflict resolution, and peace history. And this is extremely interesting in peace history because uh, we usually teach in our classroom about the war, the causes of this war. We talk about the First World War, the Second World War, uh, different kind of conflicts all over the world, but we don't talk about peacemakers. And what if we change again, another way to present or to introduce um, the message in here. Um, in terms of tolerance, so respect, for those people who think different, who believe in something different than others um, from different culture, from different race or other characteristics, in fact. Uh, to introduce in the school conflict resolution like active listening, impulse control, empathy, anger management, 
and also help the students to improve, improve their communication skills and problem solving abilities that as we see is nothing new and nothing that hasn't been included before or something that from some extent we haven't um, included in our classroom. But uh, I think that now on it's kind a must to uh, present it, to introduce it, to have it in our curriculum. So then in peace education, we uh, have these guiding principles in terms of um, what we could include, or what, what topics we could include in our classroom in peace education. So then we have dignity, equality, liberty, justice, responsibility, security, solidarity, democracy. And those are the principles behind the peace education or in, in our curriculum, some aspects to consider. On the other hand, in uh, uh, now uh, the United Nations and uh, around that 100, more than 170 uh, countries in Salamanca signed the, the statement of Salamanca and their commitment for the uh, sustainable development goals for 2030. And uh, this is very interesting because these sustainable development goals are guides to um, support and include different aspects uh, of uh, uh, peace education. So then we have, uh, that is the commitment that uh, uh, more than 170 countries sign. And uh, if you see these, um, these icons uh, in uh, some uh, organizations or some government organizations is because they're commit they, they are committed to work to lower the and to lower in some cases some um, uh, unbalance or some um, uh, difficulties in terms of um, inclusion and some other aspects to uh, increase or take more active responsibility and then we have as you see in terms of peace we have uh, gender equality quality education, uh, decent work and economic growth. Uh, we have a responsible consumption and production that is connected with, um, uh, with the environment. And we have number 10 is reduce inequalities. Number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. And 17, partnership for the goals. So you have uh, uh, zero hunger, good health, quality education, gender equality, uh, clean water, affordable and clean energy, decent work, industry and innovation, and, and sustainable uh, cities and communities. As you see, um, these uh, sustainable de development goals provide us a great opportunity to introduce meaningful topics in our, in our classroom that allow the students to develop those peace, um, the, the acquisition and the development and the awareness of those important aspects in order to improve our communities and our society in general. Uh, I don't know if there is any question so far. Jaime, do you have any questions? Yeah, Elizabeth, there are two comments that Edison wrote and he said, we need to recognize the different ways violence is shown. Many times people do not realize they are being violent, and that's true. I agree with him. And the other thing he said, and, and I agree with it too, because you are, you are showing us, we all people, sorry, we people all over the world need to become literate in compassion and empathy again. And you are showing us why, because there are many things we just ignore or forget. I don't know if there is somebody else who wants to participate or make a comment or a question. If not, no. Okay, go on, Elizabeth. Ah, yes, yes, Beatriz Erazo from Bolivia. How would you include 
SDGs in your lessons? Okay, uh, there are different ways and using a different kind of strategies. I have some examples for you later. However, uh, it depends. You can choose, for example, gender equality. Uh, we know that one of the activists of gender equality is Malala. So we, it's a novel uh, awarded. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, one way that you could introduce these goals is, for example, uh, presented a hair biography or a TED talk that she just uh, did a TED talk uh, last week, for example. So I'm a huge TED talk uh, fan. And uh, uh, learning about the, the, the problems, the difficulties she faced and what uh, was, um, she was so exposed uh, and fight for gender equality in her country. So, and that is one example. You could use, for example, you can choose number five, talk about Malala and her activism for uh, education for girls in terms of gender equality. That is one example. We have quality education. You can, um, with uh, the students, you can also uh, have a problem and solution uh, activity in which the students can analyze the pros and cons of remote learning and face-to-face -face learning from, this, from their side, from a student side. Um, they also could provide another way it's to for, uh, for 14 and 15, for example, so that it's connected with uh, environment. How can we protect uh, life below water and how to be, um, how can we protect our environment or how can we, how can we uh, be more responsible with the environment? So in 16, peace, justice, and a strong institution. So you can identify other kind of institutions or organizations who are, uh, who are uh, uh, promoting a piece. And in 17, for example, partnership for the goals, if they are working with a specific uh, environmental project, for example, looking for partners who can help them to achieve their goals. So, and, the, and there are different ways. So the, the wonderful thing about connecting our, our contents to these uh, SDGs is that not only help us to uh, support these principles on peace education, but also in our curriculum, we have all of this. We have tolerance, we have conflict resolution through problem solving activities. So, and uh, of course we have uh, 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 people like activists and peacemakers who are raising their voices and uh, we need to allow the students to discover on their own what uh, initiative they could embrace. So uh, we are going to talk a little bit more, but this is very important for, for all of us. And when um, I started working with SDGs around two years ago, more or less, with my uh, university students and uh, with the B1, yeah, with, with B1 course, uh, they had to identify a problem connected to their career, connected to the profession. This is agroindustrial engineering, um, because they found a lot of um, difficulties in this uh, sustainability, and uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, contamination and pollution. They found a lot of pollution and contamination difficulties. So, and they had to provide a solution connected to the profession. And then I connected that specific project to uh, 14 and 15, for example. And, uh, and that is the way that you could connect with the ones that you want. So if your project is environmental project, you can, you can choose 13, 14, 15. 
if you want to work with uh, biographies talking about activists, you can uh, connect it to number four, number five, uh, number 10. Uh, if you want to work with innovation and creativity, uh, you can work with number nine and with number eight. So it's up to you. So you can become the contents that you have in your curriculum. You can connect it with, with these SDGs and, uh, and work in a problem solution project that will allow the students to be aware of um, what our planet and what our society need. Okay, let's see. So when we talk about peacemakers and activists, is that we need to send the students a positive message that if we find people, if we talk about people who made uh, war along the human history, we also have peacemakers. And we have local activists and local peacemakers, not only worldwide, like Malala, Gandhi, or Nelson Mandela. In Ecuador, we're so proud to have Matilde Hidalgo de Procel, that she was the first doctor in medicine in Latin America. So, and uh, she was also the first uh, woman elected as she was running for a public uh, election, for election. So, and she did, uh, she was a pioneer and the beginning of the 20th century. So it's important to introduce to the students or to present good role models, people who make the difference and the, in our, I mean, in, in humanity or in their communities or in their local societies. In this case, we have a Latin American society, the influence she had, and we have three other activists. And there are some other activists and some other people and some other young people who are uh, uh, fighting and who are embracing these um, initiatives. So introduce to your classrooms, uh, provide some space to analyze the value of their work and uh, to analyze their beliefs and allow the students to identify themselves with, with this. Um, another activity that uh, I usually use is we use quotes and, and this is another very, very nice activity. For example, uh, we take an inspiring speech on the importance of nonviolence, put it with one quote, an eye for an eye, we only made the whole world blind. So that is in case uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, quote and the students, they have to analyze what this means. So they, they can respond. Now that they are working um, uh, remotely, uh, you could use um, Google, uh, Google Docs or you could use Padlet to allow the students to express their opinions about this specific quote or any other quote that you want to introduce based on your objectives. Uh, one of the important aspects in terms of emotion. So now we, we have talked a little bit about the role of um, peace education in our curriculum, but it's just one component. So there are some other components and they are extremely important ones, which is managing student emotions. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing right now. Um, are going to ask you to do something for me before we start in here. Okay, so what I need you to do now is to, I think that most of you or some of you are um, in front of a desk or a table. I want you to take and show me. So if you uh, open your, your cameras would be great. And the count of three, you are going to look for the first object that you see around you that makes you happy now in this moment. Jaime, you're thinking too much. 
I, I have too many bottles of different liquids. <laughs> Good. Okay, thank you. Now I want you to look around you and show me something that makes you concerned, maybe quite sad, maybe, I don't know, something like provides a, a different emotion. Okay, let me see. And the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you very much. So we have a, an empty wallet that maybe that makes you concerned or worried. So some of you had oh, a cell phone. I don't know. So Beatrice, so is that a cell phone? Is that a cell phone, Beatrice? No, it's the empty wallet. <laughs> it's the empty wallet. Okay. I, I should have thought about it before this activity. Okay. So we, uh, yes, a lot of empty wallets, guys, but. Let's keep it. It is just temporary. It is temporary. At least we have a job and we're going to have a salary, you know. On the other side, yes. So for some of us, maybe uh, taking medicine, three kind of pills a day makes us. Uh, change a little bit our, our emotion. But as you see with simple activities like this, you can also get to know your students and their concerns. So Sorry. what makes them happy? Yes, Jaime? Sorry to interrupt Elizabeth and everyone. I don't know if you noticed, but we had a hacker. Um, and I sent him out, so I won't accept anybody else because there are some people waiting in the waiting room but I won't accept them anyway, just to let oh. you know. Oh, thank you so much. I, I thought it was a kind of accident, the ones that usually happen. <laughs> I, I thought it was Ruben, but no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> because he's a very funny person, just like me. <laughs> oh, Ruben, I love your emojis. And by the way, two days ago, oh, it was it, the emojis. It was Ruben, the emojis were... Show Ruben. it again, please, Ruben. I have this. Oh, this. very nice. This. Ah, this. it was the World Emojis Day two days ago, by the way. So who could <laughs> imagine you, that emojis, they also had their day. <laughs> so, wow. Ruben will be with us in December presenting his, his, his conference. Thank Great. you, Ruben. <laughs> so, December. Is, okay, so as you see, we can still connect it and emotionally connected with our students with just simple activities like this. Okay, you stop and then you go back. Okay, let's keep, okay. So managing a student's emotions. So then we have um, its importance. And for this, I want to, oops, 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 oops. Let me check a little bit. Okay, let me see if this was the right one. Mm. Uh, let me see a little bit. I think that this was the one. Okay, yeah. So, and for managing a student's emotion, um, I, I know that uh, maybe this is very um, um, familiar to you, the concept of uh, mindset uh, provided by Carol Dweck. She is one of the top researcher 
And uh, what she says about emotions is that people life uh, and the mindset itself is that people begin life with a growth mindset. If we look at this picture, this picture was taken in October 2019 when we had some violent events in our country, in Ecuador. So, and uh, I was very shocked by this picture because as you see is a baby girl playing with the doll and we have adults over there um fighting arguing so she was surrounded by um a negative environment and atmosphere but she was only care about having a good time with her doll so carol dweck says that people begin life with a growth mindset without no fears of making mistakes without no fears of um uh not knowing but then she also says that as soon as children become able to evaluate themselves some of them become become afraid of challenges and they become afraid of not being smart and i'm going to point it in quotation they are they become afraid of not being smart so and that is very sad because the ones who have experienced teaching adults adults we are tough learners so we want to be perfectionists we are not risk takers most of us so in our our students they are afraid of making mistakes that's why they don't take risk and that's why they keep shy and they can quiet along the classroom so then we have is as soon as children become able to evaluate they are whether they are evaluate they are uh, they and they also being evaluate so that behavior changes. So then we have a challenge. So, uh, and the concept and the studies of Carol Dweck's mindset and the fix versus growth, it's highly important in terms of emotions and to support our students in dealing with these emotions. So, we need to promote and to introduce in our classroom a activities that embraces challenges so and also we need to provide the students the tools to be resourceful and also let them know that they need they see effort as necessary so there is no success without effort and also learn through criticism and making mistakes is part of learning. And of course, be inspired by others' success. And this also challenges us as teachers to change a little bit our mind and be open-minded about this growth mindset concept. So if the students see us changing the way we address to them, so they are going to get used to it. So, okay. So when we have a growth mindset means that you believe intelligence can be developed and you have a passion to learn, you embrace challenge, you learn from criticism, you keep going when things get tough, are inspired by the greatness in others, and see effort as the path to mastery. So reading Carol Dweck's uh, work, uh, it's very exciting, very interesting. Uh, you can find her, uh, she is a TED Talker as well, so you can find Carol Dweck in TED Talks. Uh, but listen to her and uh, and uh, learning from her experience in developing growth mindset in, uh, in, in people, it's exciting. So it's a highly recommended uh, source. And then we have Cristiano Ronaldo. I am not quite a fan of uh, soccer. My husband is, but uh, I'm going to use uh, this a quote from him and he says when your mind says give up hope whispers one more try 
and uh, in growth mindset so you don't give up you keep trying no matter what happens you give up and keep trying and keep trying and that is something that we need especially with uh, teenagers so the ones who teach teenagers it, this is a real challenge because they face um, difficulties uh, because of their age and it's very difficult for us to motivate teenagers and sometimes they want to give up they want to surrender in the middle of something and uh, we need to let them know that it's okay not knowing that it's okay not uh, being able to do something yet because that is another magic word that we need to include in our in our classroom it's okay if you don't if you can do it yet but we need to keep trying keep trying and don't give up so in the growth mindset so there is um see, i think that i have in here um for us for teacher education so i don't know if you can see it so with the growth mindset i'm going to show you later so the book there is a handbook in fact that i like a lot because it has a lot of practical ideas how to um, empower students to achieve using growth mindsets. So it's a very interesting book that is helpful for, for us as educators. Uh, what kind of strategies or activities we, can, we could use to um, help our students to identify their emotions. I'm gonna share with you a project that we developed with my students and I found an interesting story behind this activity. So the task they have to um, download from Google uh, Play uh, memo generator app. That was the first thing and they had to create their own app by uh, using a meme. So, you know, using memes are very uh, popular and uh, there are wonderful and incredible and very, very creative memes. At the beginning of the activity, something like this happened. So in the first part, because they had to create a meme into three moments. And, uh, and this is, uh, these were the first memes I received. And you could feel or you can feel the way they feel towards the subject itself, towards, towards the language. And then we have someone that uh, when they ask me if one day I will learn English, no, I don't think I will. So you can feel the, this, this student is being negative. And then the second one, he says the teacher with power, which is very <laughs> interesting. And then we have a difficult exam and me, with a low English. Okay. And, and the third one, they say, they told me that English was easy, but I can't pronounce it. So these are real examples from my students. And they had, this was at the beginning of the semester, in fact. And uh, they had to um, express their emotions. As you see, you could identify some of their emotions and they and their fears towards English. On a second part, so weeks later, once the semester uh, was uh, in process, so then they show me some of these memes. So the first one we have me, we have hunger, lesson, more hunger, sleep. So it's how they feel. They feel tired, they feel exhausted. They feel they have a lot of things to do. It's not just English, it's in general in the first part. The second one was very funny to me because I'm Thanos. <laughs> and they says, teacher, and we write it in English or Spanish? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> that, that, that was very funny. And, uh, and then they start focusing their attention to me and the teacher trying to understand our pronunciation in English. So it's not their concern. Now they are concerned about me and struggling in my way 
to understand them. So as you see, the process, it's, it's quite different. And uh, I had an aha moment with the third stage. And the third part of the project, they, I start uh, receiving uh, memes like this. With the one on the left, really made me cry. So because they have problems, stress, pain, and then at the end they have the English class which means that the English class is the place where they feel safe, where they feel um, comfortable, and when um, it's a place where they forget the problems, stress, and pain they have. And then they have, I hate languages, but I love English. So that was an aha moment and a very emotional moment for me when I received the, especially the one on the left. Any comments over here, guys? Yeah, Beatriz from Bolivia wants to know what is that book again, because it's beautiful. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yes, please. Um, uh, okay, I would like to clarify that, sorry. Yes, I would like to know that book again. Thank you so much, The Growth Mindset. And uh, I was, the beautiful thing, it was about the meme that you received i almost cried when i saw it like they feel so good sorry yeah. it, it is really powerful that you can provide your students a place where they can be okay because it's difficult it's difficult for them it's difficult for us i'm sorry but it, it touched me too my apologies to your students, a place where they can talk about how they feel, a place where they can forget their problems because the problems are going to be waiting for them. The same way that we leave our problems there by the door, students' problems are going to be waiting for them by the door. So when a student recognizes that powerful magic that you are doing in their lives, providing them at least a couple of hours where they can forget them, it's wonderful. I, I congratulate you and my apologies. I cry for everything, just in case. Don't and worry, I, Beatriz. I, I cry all the time, so my apologies. Me too, for that. Me too Beatriz. I cry for everything and all the time. And, and, and just to add something, Elizabeth, I was, um, I remember Ruben speak up showing his his photographs, his money. And that's true. We don't know what is behind the screen. And, and we don't know what emotions they have. We don't know how they feel. And your question at the beginning of the conference was great. How do you feel? And that's what we, something that we always should ask our students and not our, only our students, but ourselves too. How do you feel, Edison? How do you feel, Teresa? How do you feel, Roxana? And be open to, to say, I really feel bad. I really feel upset for this or for that. We are all humans. I always say that is the equalizer. You can be a teacher, a doctor, a PhD, a master, a student, a gardener, whatever, but the equalizer is that we are human beings. We suffer, we have problems, we cry, we need somebody. Uh, yeah, you know what? Um, I, I understand that because every time I had the opportunity to present this um, student work, uh, I, I'm emotional with it because, you know, as you see, it was a process. At the beginning, they were so afraid of uh, the the subject itself, because they see English as uh, I see math. I, I, I'm not a math person, and when I see numbers, I start like, oh my gosh, math, math, numbers, numbers, and equations and things like that. So trust me, I'm suffering in my doctorate now when I start talking with the statistics. But at the same time, it's something I need to fear, I need to face that fear. So, and uh, this is something that I need to help my students to overcome. So, no fears about English, making mistakes, it's okay. It's part of your learning process, but don't stop, keep trying, come on. If you don't know how to pronounce it, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, go ahead. So, and uh, as you see, three different stages in this project. 
and we use a memory generator and you can use memory generators now. So it's, it's an activity that you could do with your students easily. So, and you see three moments. And the first moment they were concerned about themselves. They faced their fears. On the second moment, they were quite concerned about me. So do my teacher understand what I say? It's very hard for my teacher to, to deal with this. So they start changing their minds. And the third one, it was my aha moment. It was like emotional when I received that because we had a, a WhatsApp group. So I have all my students in WhatsApp, every single classroom in WhatsApp. My, my, the memory of my cell phone is full, but I have them on WhatsApp, all of them. And uh, I try, I try, this, this semester has been harder, but I try to send them a, a morning message. Come on, you can do it. Go ahead, today is gonna be a great day. So everything sending something positive. And sometimes I have received some messages back uh, on my students who said, teacher, good morning. I really needed to, to read that today. So I don't know what happened to that, but you don't know the effect of your messages uh, having your students. So, and that is, and, and nowadays it's more important than ever than ever. So I'm sure that we all have, we all have anecdotes and, uh, uh, from different, so happy anecdotes, but memorable anecdotes of teaching in, uh, now that we are in remote teaching or virtual, uh, virtual teaching or blended, uh, I, I don't know what, whatever you, your institutions are imp have implemented in this, uh, uh, pandemic times. But what is important from our side to let our students know that we are there. So we cannot solve the problems, but we are there. So, and uh, that is something that I try to do with my students. And uh, that is part, identifying their emotions also help us to direct and redirect the topics. I mean, maybe not the grammar, maybe not the mechanical skills that we are concerned about our subjects, but that would help us to, and help them to speak up, to talk about the emotion, to talk about how they feel. And there are different, different uh, apps, different website. And uh, by the way, I, I see that Andres was around. Andres is around, so I will be with Andres the 20, uh, on July 25th, I guess. Uh, talking about uh, blended learning and some activities that you could use in the classroom. And even we are going to talk about different, um, different apps or different websites that we could use to promote the students' learning and participation. It's everything connected to emotion. So that is what I believe. And it's no, no matter how technologically uh experts or novice we are so the essence of who we are as educators is always there okay uh let's see is, is there any comment jaime before we continue i don't know but just a reminder we still got 25 more minutes and anybody else has a question please or a comment me please edison Go on. Yeah, and uh, hey, okay. and uh, somebody asked about um, how to implement the SDGs, right? So, but I think the best way is to have this project-based learning because in that with the, the theoretical background of PBL is you have to, to choose one real problem and offer real solutions by means of following those, the schemata of the problem-based learning. So that way you can do that, okay? So the, one of the problems that we need to tackle is uh, recognizing violence. And that is one problem because vi there is violence everywhere. And, um, and that, that, that's the very first thing, okay? And something else, I, 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 I did, uh, when I introduced myself, I was saying that, uh, I, I really want to say before I forget, it's that this uh, meeting, this, this things we have every every Sunday is really our, let's say our mass, because it's a way where we can find some peace. We find somebody who is experiencing the same thing we are, everybody, we are 
doing we are doing suffering and going through so it's um it's a, a very good way for us to to be in the same position of everybody else okay i i i can i i don't think anybody can say that is not my problem that is not something i haven't experienced there are different ways to do that and then sometimes we have more worries than others along the week but this is the this sunday meetings is like our uh teaching mass and that's <laughs> I mean, and thank you for that Beautiful yeah. words, Edison. Thank you very much. Yes, I was planning not to have any more meetings on Sundays. I say that's okay, but then no, it's a place where we can find peace, uh, friendship, brotherhood, everything. So thank you very much, Edison. Thank you. Go on, Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, let me see what what comes next. Okay. Okay, so this was one of the projects and another the project that we are very, very proud of is, um, remember that when uh, we talk about peace and the definition of peace, we mentioned the importance of becoming or being active, um, active participants or um, in order to be uh, agents of change. So um, World English Institute, so the institute that um, uh, I address, so we have a strategic um, alliance with UNICEF and Six Seconds. And we promote the pop-up festival that in fact, so if you want more information about the first virtual pop-up festival, please you can send an email to me uh, because we will have a mentoring and a mentor for Ecuador and mentoring session about how to organize the pop-up festival with your institutions, with your students in remote learning. So, but it, the, the boy you see here, the child, the child you see here is, is one of our students in our institute. And uh, what you see is they, what he did, he colored his emotions. So here you have a set of emotions and uh, he had to color and identify their emotions and then color these emotions in the heart. So it is a nice, very nice activity. It's one of my favorites. And uh, that is where we work with different initiatives. So we provide also different opportunities. And as you see uh, children, but also you see teenagers where they learn connected, connected to the um, uh, sustainable objectives, development objectives with SDGs uh, to learn what their difference between male and female, in, in this case, in this activity, for example, they had to analyze um, uh, myths and uh, real facts about being a male and being a female. And uh, in this case, children, they are expressing their emotion. This is for the youngest. This is a very easy activity that for the ones who are teaching children can be even done at home as a project and they, you can all work in, um, uh, in, in the remote, your remote classrooms. And uh, at the back, you have Hortons. You'll read some charts over, here, over there that we have. So that was part of the reading festival uh, where English Institute organizes every year. So this year we are going to have two virtual e events. I will be more than happy to invite you to participate of the virtual uh, events. So the first one is the reading festival and the reading festival is very connected with this second pop-up festival. In the Reading Festival last year, we read Dr. Seuss' um, most popular, I mean, three most, at least the three most popular, the students read The Grinch, Hortons, and Lorax. So the one is connected with uh, tolerance and respect to minorities. So the second one, the message is to um, respect the environment with the Lorax and um, with uh, the Grinch also to uh, be uh, empathetic. And it's a strong message towards bullying because as you see, the Grinch um, was 
hated Christmas because he was bullied when he was a child. So the students, they had to analyze all of that and they had to uh, express their messages and reflect about it. And we talk about bullying, we talk about uh, intolerance, we talk about discrimination, we talk about different kind of aspects and they had to express their emotions through different projects. So as you see, we provide the opportunities for the students to express themselves. So allowing the students to express their emotions, it's, it's definitely a, a must. Uh, nowadays and ever, it's been important. I have a strong belief about this. So this uh, is part of, yes. Elizabeth, sorry to interrupt. Gloria Tello from Ecuador makes this question. Do you think learning with games is a form of peace? Uh, are we talking about gamification? I guess so. Because do you think it's a way to learn with games as a form of peace in general? Uh, I would say that it um, depends on your objective, uh, Gloria. Uh, I, I don't know what you are measuring uh, through that specific activity, but if what you could do if you want to um, introduce vocabulary, you could some um, terms connected to peace, for example, tolerance, uh, justice, equity. You can introduce those topics through gamification. Uh, for example, if you want to play the Hackman, there is an application where well, several apps, and I use those apps with my students uh, with the Hackman, for example. And I want to introduce any topic connected to it. Uh, I use the vocabulary, for example, with the Hackman with those words. Uh, one of the units in my class was um, uh, food, the very typical food. Uh, and I connected to nutrition and after that it was connected to hunger and poverty. And uh, then I have another lesson uh, and a project connected how to deal with poverty. And then I connect that poverty and hunger with the sustainable development goals. Okay, to me the best way to work it's in context so if but it also depends what your objectives are i totally my students my they are young adults and they love when i play with them with kahoot or when i play the hangman with them um, or when i implement any kind of of um, of game which is okay um, and i would say that if that supports uh, peace education, I would say yes, because it depends on the words you are using, it depends on the task you ask the students to do. And, and, and again, remember that technology and applications and everything so on, they are tools for us, available for us to reach our students. So, and uh, it's like the metaphor of the stone. Uh, the stone can be a good tool or could be a bad one. So it depends how you use it. It depends on your objective. So that would be the same. I don't know if that answers the question, Jaime. Or to me, it, it did. Okay. As you said, it depends on the objective. If you're, it, if you're teaching them fairness, justice, e e equality, I don't know. It's, it depends on what you want to teach or you just want to have fun. Uh, yes, so de definitely. If you just want to have fun, you, you can take uh, words uh, in isolation, but if you want to connect those words to a more meaningful topic or another context through a reading or through a video or as a pre-whatever, pre-teaching, and you want to connect it, of course you will use the vocabulary connected to the topic that you will, you will see. Okay, someone is... Someone has scratched the screen. Okay, we have another hacker, I guess. <laughs> Jaime, someone is um, drawing on the screen. Drawing. 
Yeah, could you stop sharing the screen? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have to identify who he or she is. Wait. Um, yeah, so, um, well, I guess, so, I guess but he or she left. Okay, uh, but again, so we need to keep our emotions up and we are not of going course. to allow that bother this us. Is, because it happens, it, it happens in some classrooms. I have seen um, one of the classrooms and I my, of course, uh, there was some, I mean, children are more mature than adults. And, uh, and they start, you know, underlying and highlighting the teacher's screen. And the teacher started, stop doing that, stop annotating, stop, stop. it's funny. So, and then we say children are more mature than adults. So, but it happens. Okay, guys, let's see. Um, we still it. got uh, 13 more minutes. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna share with you. Che, como si que se está me me estoy aburriendo un poquito, como que no entiendo nada de lo que dicen. Yeah, that's the the Argentina again. She was here again. I'm sorry. Okay. Faltaba un puntito nomás por la a la cara. Perdón. Okay. Okay, guys, let's see. Uh, what we have in here, it's another activity in which the students had the opportunity to express their message for peace. As you see, so when they have peace, justice, and a strong institution. This is what this uh, teenager expresses after the uh, reflection. And here it was very funny because uh, this is the original. As you see the teacher, that is the original task because each character represents one, uh, one SDG. So we have one uh, different character, but then girls, so only one boy, but the one, two, three, four of these girls, they decided to use as a powerful bracelet. And we allow them to do because they are, they are very empowered girls, let me tell you. So this group is it's a wonderful group. And they decided uh, to change a little bit the the way of the activity. So uh, as you see the teacher, that's the way this should be uh, done, the project, but then they decided to use it as a powerful bracelet. So they were highly empowered with uh, Wonder Woman, in fact. Okay, so, and then we have the power of yet. So, and that is, as I told you before, it's important to let the students know that not knowing the answer, it's okay. They, they cannot do whatever they want to, it's okay. That it doesn't work yet, it's okay. And I'm not good at this yet, it's okay. And this goes to, to us teachers as well. So um, if we are struggling with technology, don't worry, keep practicing. Maybe you don't handle the technology. We don't handle the technology because this, this has been an everyday learning, every night learning, all day long learning. And it's okay not knowing. It's okay not having all the answers, not even for the students, not even for, uh, for, for the rest who surrounds us. It's okay. It is the same for Ari, okay? So the power of yet, as part of uh, the message to send to our students. And this is taken from a big life uh, journal, as I told you, so I forgot to cite it, but um, uh, I can send to you if you want uh, some of the uh, links to this uh, wonderful, wonderful material. And uh, this says that we need to praise for effort, strategies, progress, hard work, persistence, rising to a challenge and learning from a mistake. So thank you, uh, Big Life Journal for this. And uh, stop praising our, even I started with my daughter. So for the talent, for being smart, because we are all smart, or to born gifted, uh, fixed abilities or not making mistakes. Uh, I have two people raising their hands. Jaime? Wait, wait, sorry. Yeah, uh, Andres Rodriguez was doing it. Please, Andres, go on. 
And then Teresa. Hello, good morning, uh, Jaime. It was a it is a pleasure to see you again. I congratulate you and my friend Elizabeth for his for her presentation uh, today. And this topic is very valuable, and we are going to listen the the tips and apply no in our teaching practice no. So Elizabeth, thanks for sharing this uh, uh, this webinar because I think that uh, we are going to be concerned of this uh, specific um, and useful tips. Thank you so much, and thank and bye bye. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Andres. Teresa, do you have a comment or a question, Teresa Maya Noriega? No. Okay. Could you please uh, turn your mic on, Teresa? It's off. Your mic is off. Turn it on, please. Yes. Okay, Teresa. Uh, this topic is very interesting that for uh, the teachers and uh, the person. For me, um, congratulations, Miss, for this, uh, for sharing, for share your your experience. Um, now I am going to I am going to teach to my students about this situation. For example, this project in my school. Uh, some one of them, some one of them, great space and emotional environment. In my students <clears throat> um, explicitly teach positive communication strategies to build a repertory of easily accessible skills. Um, engage in activity that integrate strategies and develop peaceful have habits of mind. For example, I. Thank you very much. This is my this is my 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 opinions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, yes. So maybe <clears throat> some of you might consider that uh, focusing on emotions uh, is a distractor to the content that we teach, but it's not. It's that we create the the positive environment that learning could happen. Uh, and that is important as well. So I could start teaching just right after I see how my students or I notice how my students feel on that moment, okay? Because sometimes if we plan, if we go to our classes with these role lessons and we said okay this is my plan these are my objectives this is my this is what i have to do and it doesn't work it's not because of the not even it's not because of the plan it's not even because of the students it's because of my lack of empathy to the situation excuse me don't worry don't worry Elizabeth. and anthony michael has a question he he, he needs a clarification elizabeth go on uh, anthony michael Thank you very much. Sorry for coming late. Um, Jaime, thank you. Um, Miss, please, I need your professional input here. You know, uh, we are talking about this peace teaching theory. And uh, I'm asking that um, can the relationship between students and just build a kind of peaceful environment? You know, you know, and if it is going to build, can also the way they view the teacher also build that kind of peaceful environment. Now, um, Edison, my good friend, responded to me that it is possible. But my question now is, can this peace theory be uh, based on the content of the lesson or the way the lesson is taught and the way um, students view the teacher and also the relationship between the teacher and the student? Because, you know, this whole thing can affect each other please just your clarification thank you yeah. thank you thank you anthony uh for 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 your questions okay uh, um how could i say um I, i'm going to share from my experience i'm going to answer these questions from my experience so in the teacher student relations the relationship and the student teacher relationship 
I started working in the university two years ago. And uh, as part of my teaching, that is something that I do the very first week of class is to, I do not start my, um, the content of English itself the first week of class. I take one week to get into know my students. And I implement a lot of getting to know or uh, warm ups or icebreakers that allow me to observe what kind of activities they enjoy the most, what uh, kind of language they are uh, able to manage, um, what kind of topics um, maybe not, I would say not they prefer, but also uh, they feel comfortable because not everybody feel comfortable with some activities that we present in our classroom. And also, uh, what kind of crazy activities, so uh, crazy because of me, okay, because they can dance, they can jump, they can uh, blow balloon, balloons in the middle of the class. So what kind of activities as, as young adults, because I teach at, at uh, university level, what kind of activities, it's like a, a thermometer over there, so it's kind of measure them and take them little by little, um, challenge them. So after that first or first and uh, one and a half week of class, so of course they do it in English because I introduce English little by little. So because that is also part of my job to be sure that I don't, um, if for example with an A1 students or A2 students, if they don't understand what I'm saying, even I'm, because I'm speaking in English all of the time, I need to be sure that they have the opportunity and the confidence to speak and tell me means I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is the role. And that is also a, a way to introduce peace education in my classroom. Because my responsibility is if I have them for two hours, they should have the opportunity and the right to participate, to speak up, to produce, to share their message, their opinions or whatever, at the level they can do it in that moment. Because I told them, if you can speak fluently, it's temporary. You don't do it yet. So I brought on the board a big yet over there. So, and, uh, and then I encourage them to be risk takers and, and speak, just speak and produce. And, and that is something that, that happens. And once I create a safe environment, because another thing is the first day of class, we have mutual agreement. And then I say, I, it's in my class, it's not allowed, and this is not negotiable. It's not allowed intolerance, um, jokes that affect other person's uh, beliefs or encourages discrimination. So, and they know exactly that when one student makes a joke, it's like, like <laughs> with me, <laughs> it's one point less. And I told them the first, remember the first day of class, so you agree with this. And they have to sign the agreement, in fact. Mm. Part of, it's part of the agreement on the first day of class. So I said the rules of the game on the first week or week and a half, week of class, and we signed the agreement. This, you're allowed to do this. You are not allowed to do this. Agree? Yes. Okay, sign in. Mm -hmm. So once you establish the rules of the game, and again, these are young adults, these are university students. Yes, Raj. I, I just uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for, for what you're just saying. I think it's what you're uh, just inviting us to do is saying all feelings are acceptable, but not all behavior is acceptable. Wow. You know, yes. because we oh, all have feelings. That's yeah. That's, and, yeah. That's the thing. That's yeah. the clue. Cool. To set okay. the guidelines about that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. The, and the, yes, that is. The idea is also to create a community of learners mm -hmm. where the teacher also learns. Mm -hmm. Because we have to be humble enough to say, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. I began teaching uh, police candidates. And you know, the environment's violent because some of them come with a will to help, while others come with a they decide to become rich. And so if I ask them, as you say, 
the first days you start working with the idea of learning about them, they are going to show you things that you are not supposed to know so fast as what is your most valuable possession and they show you a, a rifle. <laughs> Yeah. So that is, so you see, so you have to start mm -hmm. from, from this mindset and change it. And, but, yep. and also you see how many women want to become a police officer. And there is also a, an imbalancing also th at that. But the idea of the teacher is to be, to try to build a, this community where the student mm -hmm. is another learner, where the teacher is another learner. Because I have to learn their behaviors in order to to act and try to change those things and see. But as as you also pointed with those memes, and one of them is to change it because students get some piece in the English class, the piece they don't have in other places or situations. Yeah. Uh, I'm concerned about the time, uh, <laughs> Jaime. It's uh, this topic. It's as I told you, it's it's very exciting. So, and uh, I would only wouldn't like to leave something left because I also consider that that is important. So, and just I'm, I, I'm going to finish this part, and after that, well, Jaime will say we can expand or extend a few minutes uh, for comments and uh, and remarks. We have five more minutes, five more uh, American minutes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> not, not Latin American, not Peruvian, no, please. Uh, and before you go on, Judy in Germany has also a short, brief, concise comment. Sure. Judy. Judy. In Germany. Ah, there you are. Your mic, your mic on Judy, please. Your microphone. Okay. Uh, okay Judy? There she is. It's okay there? Yeah, go on, please. Okay, sorry. Yeah. No, I just wanted to comment that after I worked in, in Peru, in Lima, and I had the chance to work in Chile also, and then coming here to Germany, I feel very special because here the teaching, I, I teach adults and little children in a kindergarten. And uh, I had to change my way of teaching because in South America, we are like exactly your presentation is that is great. You know, the feeling and English is teaching a language is not like teaching, I don't know any other, any other subject. But I notice here in Germany, you are not supposed to show your feelings. <laughs> Even the little kids in the kindergarten, that uh, also there are many foreigners now, and uh, sometimes they don't speak German, but English is the language. They come to my class and I meet them once a week and I am the point of, <laughs> of I don't know, happiness for them. And sometimes I say my words in Spanish and I have kids from Romania and they understand me, so <laughs> that's great. But when I teach adults, it's like I have learned here, I must not ask, how are you today? How, I mean, just the how are you today, but okay, hello, we start the class. No feelings, no, you go direct to the class. You know, this is the German style as well. So, and for me, this has been difficult. In the, in the English class, uh, I have managed to, to follow the rules, but when I teach Spanish as a second language, then sorry, <laughs> I use my Spanish feeling and, and uh, things, but I notice they don't, uh, the German people are not so eager to show their feeling. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. And, and that it comes to another topic that it's the cultural differences or the, the level of uh, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in the context that we teach. However, however, remember that uh, there are some universal rights and universal re uh, behaviors and also we have some uh, limits to set in the classroom in case that you see and that is a, and, and that is not negotiable anyway so the behaviors in fact uh, it's not negotiable and uh, and that could say um, we respect a specific context uh, but there are some universal 
rights or universal uh, behaviors that we are all respect. So, and, and, and that would be more addressed to it. Okay, thank you. Let me, I'm gonna, I don't want to leave this time because I think that it's important. And, um, and this uh, message is for us teachers, for us colleagues. If you don't prioritize yourself, you constantly start falling lower and lower on your list. So Michelle Obama, so she says this, and this is connected what we are living now, which is our well-being. And teachers matter, guys. And I want to um, honor you today because um, we know what, what we are facing right now, um, making the educational system all over the world work. But remember that the student well-being begins with teacher well-being. So, and we, it's important for us to keep a balance and also to use the strategies that we have available to be healthy emotionally, physically, and uh, spiritually. And uh, this is uh, another topic for discussion, but that is um, important uh, for us as teachers to consider. We are important in this process, but if we are not okay, our students won't. Okay, and uh, just to give you a good thank you, that is my email address, just in case you want to contact me and to talk more about uh, peace education and the projects we have in mind as institution to uh, promote uh, peace in our classrooms. Okay, thank you very, very much. Thank you, dear Elizabeth. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I, we have two British <laughs> minutes to say thank you to Elizabeth. Uh, always, always, I, I want to, 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 to um, mention again Edison's words and, and Beatrice says, we all have problems. We are all humans. We, beh behind this face and this smiling, we all have problems. After finishing this meeting, we, we, we all go back to our reality, our problems, money, light, etc. But here we find a good place to share happiness, a, a friendship, and everything else. Thank you very much, Elizabeth Ortiz, for your time. We have two minutes for some people who want to say uh, they are coming or, or, uh, or something to Elizabeth or to all of us. Ruben, speak up in Lima, Peru. Yes, just to congratulate Elizabeth, and you are right. And we have to know that um, emotions play important roles in teaching and learning. So we as teachers do not only have to, to read essays, to read assignments from students. So we have to try to read their minds. And it works in all the cultures. Thank you. Thank you, dear Ruben. Anybody else? in other part of the planet, of the universe, mm -hmm. of the earth. I just want to take a picture of all of you guys with a huge love heart. So, and that means that we, okay. we care, we are with you, we are here for you, we are going this to- This is the first time you. I do this. <laughs> okay. Me too, me too. Okay, me too. who wants to take the print screen? <laughs> Ooh, <and> me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, and three. Done. Okay, before you go, before you go, two important things. Please be careful, watch out with whom you share the link. Somebody, Cecilia was asking me, but how did, did these hackers got the link? Mm -hmm. That's a question. Some, one of you uh, maybe shared it with somebody, and that somebody shared it with another body, and that was the problem. So be careful who you share the, the link with. And number two, uh, next week we have, we are going to have Marina Gonzalez from Argentina. You will love her just like Elizabeth. She will be talking about finding opportunities in times of chaos. <laughs> My goodness. So she will answer all our questions about our chaos. 
So one more time, thank you everybody for your time, your presence, your smiles, your, your, your good vibes. And now we can restart a new week tomorrow. A virtual hug for all of you guys. Virtual so hug for everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth, Judy, you. Raj, Tito, yeah. Edison, Teresa, Roxana. Oh, <laughs> <very bye. nice. laughs> Thank you so much. It was really enriching. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Patrice, Eric, Marisol, Karen, Luis, Fatima, Fatilu, la Inocente. Hello. Teresa, Cecilia, Teresa, Ana, Tania, Jorge, Veronica, and everyone else. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much.